Alistair is a vaguely deer-themed sinner demon with serious Wendigo vibes. Alistair is a powerful overlord and accumulated large amounts of power seemingly overnight upon arriving in hell, slaughtering as many overlords as he could find, and then broadcasting their tortured screams across the radio waves for every sinner in the pride ring to hear. Sadistically enjoying the fear caused by such a disturbing display. Alistair is seemingly intrigued by Charlie Morningstar, the Princess of Hell, when he sees her get into a fight with Katie Killjoy, the main host of News 666. He sees the fight and is immediately intrigued, and a plan starts to form in his mind. He then goes as far as to seek Charlie out, offering his services to her as he claims he wants to help Charlie run the Hasbin Hotel. When questioned why he's so interested, he simply adds that he wants to watch sinners try to be better only to fail in the end. As a twisted form of entertainment for himself. Despite Charlie clearly seeing through Alistair's bullshit, she does allow him to help out with the hotel for as long as he desires. Alistair quickly supplies the hotel with staff via some of his minions. He pulls Husk out of a poker game and pulls Nifty out of the Lake of Fire to become the hotel's bartender and maid respectively. Alistair also seems to be a very accomplished cook, showcased when he works up an appetite, defeating Serpentius in a failed attack against the hotel. He declares that he wants to cook jambalaya, specifically his mother's jambalaya, as the recipe was so spicy it nearly killed her. Alistair also seems to have quite the taste for meat, specifically fresh meat showcased in the comic A Day in the Life of Alistair, where we get to see Alistair's day-to-day -day life as he goes to various places and even buys meat from various butchers. He even states that he visits every butcher shop that appears in the Pride Ring and always buys them out of their venison. Specifically, he likes to eat raw, fresh venison. One of my favorite design elements of Alistair, being that he is an apparent deer-themed demon, is his ties to the Wendigo. Every time Alistair seems to be angered or expressing any type of intense emotion, he lets out the haunting cries of the Wendigo. In his mortal life, Alistair was described as being a popular radio host and a prolific serial killer. He is also from Louisiana, which is where all that Popeye's chicken comes from. Hook a guy up, Al. Given that Alistair is an extremely powerful overlord, it comes as no surprise that Alistair has a multitude of different terrifying abilities, starting off with Alistair's voodoo magic. Alistair has voodoo magic, which presents itself as green symbols and fire. It is part of everything he does, from soul deals to summoning various artifacts and even henchmen. It seems that unlike other demons that we've seen in Has Been Hotel and Hell of a Boss respectively, Alistair is able to access his demonic form whenever he wishes, whereas other demons seem to only access this form when they are feeling intense emotions like anguish or rage. Alistair transforms into a more demonic version of himself, he's got longer, lankier arms, and he has 
twisted, sharp, jagged horns. His smile is so wide that it's actually causing blood to spew out of his mouth. His eyes are black and have blood red radio dials, and he can even sprout Slenderman tentacles out of his back for melee combat. Alistair is also physically powerful, showcased when he effortlessly slaughtered a huge army of loan sharks and ate their corpses. But Alistair's most valuable tool is his sharp-toothed, sinister grin. Alistair puts on this facade, this mask if you will, that he is always enjoying people's suffering and that he always has this sinister grin. But Alistair is a very calculating beast. Alistair loves to revel in people's suffering, there's no doubt about that, but he would not let people see his emotions because he feels like that would make him weaker. So instead, he puts on this facade that he's always in control and he's always got this sinister grin on to keep his enemies guessing, his friends inspired, and ensure that he is always in control. Another thing to add that feeds directly into what I just talked about is that Alistair knows he's super powerful and can end somebody just like that. But instead of directly killing people, Alistair makes a game out of playing with them, sometimes for years at a time, given his history with his rival Vox. Vox who outright despises Alistair, and Alistair knows this, and takes every chance he gets to get under Vox's skin and mess with him. That's the tea. You all tiny prick. I'll show you suffering. Uh-oh, the TV is buffering. I'll destroy you. I'm afraid you've lost your signal. The long and short of it is this is Alistair's game. Alistair prefers to let his victims and enemies live for as long as possible because he finds great sadistic enjoyment out of watching his enemies suffer. In fact, I think Alistair's game extends to basically giving him a god complex. Alistair has been so powerful, so feared and revered for so many centuries that Alistair deems himself to literally be the most powerful demon in the Pride Ring, something that other demons should fear, rightfully so, and that no one is dumb enough to fuck with him and live. So when Adam shows up with his exorcist army ready to fight Alistair, Alistair plays Adam off as a joke, messing with him like he would mess with Vox, and ends up losing the fight, a mistake that Alistair is in raged by. The fact that due to his reckless actions, he allowed himself to be injured and even more so than that, almost killed protecting his friends. Something that deeply bothers Alistair and he brings up in his song, Alistair's Breakdown. But Alistair refuses to let this be his future and that he has big plans for Charlie and her unlikely crew of misfits. Plans that Alistair probably had since day one. Plans that are now slowly unraveling, like Alistair's sanity. And the more Alistair is reminded that he is bound by the chains of a soul contract, and the more he realizes that he has to bide his time as long as he can, pretending to play nice, it seems the more Alistair is becoming a bit unhinged and crazed. Might it go to the point where Alistair eventually cracks and we get to see just how homicidal and sadistic Alistair is underneath this facade that he's so carefully carved out for himself. With all that being said, this pretty much brings my Alistair Explained video to a close. Let me know what you enjoyed from Alistair in Season 1 and what you expect from him or what you'd like to see from him in Season 2 of Has Been Hotel on Prime Video. And with that, do take care, have a great night, and I'll see you in the next video.